but it's kind of new. And as we sing, before we sing it, let's just take a breath. That was a lot. Inhale. 
And exhale. Let's just take a second and be reminded that he is good and he is for us and he is with us in everything. So let's just sing this together.
let's sing this out together. Come on. There's a grace when the heart is on the fire. Another way when the walls are closing in. And when I look at the space between where I used to be and this reckoning.
So Heavenly Father, um, man, those are, uh, those are powerful words to sing over ourselves. I'll count the joy come every battle. Um, because that's us realizing that with you, life isn't perfect. It isn't seamless, surely isn't easy. Um, but the true promise, the true goodness in our relationship with you is that you're gonna be there no matter what. And so we just sing that over our hearts. We sing that over our lives, over our friends' lives, over our family. That's truth that I want to seek constantly and remind myself constantly we are forgetful people. So thank you for being a God who loves to remind us of that. We love you. It's in your name we pray, amen. Thanks for singing, guys. We love you. You can have a seat. What's up, Inside Out, long time no see. We still doing good? We doing good? A couple of you trying to find your seats. It's all good, just in the floor, it's all, it's all, it's all great. Okay, real quick, uh, you know how in the very beginning somebody like starts off and they have like a really funny joke and then they get into the message? It's like, that's typically like the formula that we like to use around here and all that good stuff. I, for a second, I, I need to tell you guys about something in my own life. This is my two month like anniversary of being the IO director here, which is awesome. <laughs> And, and I don't, I appreciate that, I feel love, but more so the reason why I wanna talk about that is because I feel like over these last two months, like I've kinda gotten to know you, you've kinda gotten to know me, but can I tell you about something uh, that I've been going through personally real quick? Some of you just started sweating, like this is awkward. Like I don't know what, what, what's happening. Well, uh, the, we just sang the song, Another in the Fire. Uh, myself and my family, my wife, we've been going through a specific fire really over the course of this last weekend. Uh, and it's this thing called moving to Cherokee County. Uh, I don't know if you know this, but for the last two months, I've been commuting an hour and a half each way every single day and I've been dead inside. Like, I, I hate it, I hate traffic, Atlanta is silly, I don't like it, uh, and, and we finally made our way into uh, Cherokee County. Uh, by a show of hands, how many people have ever moved before? Have you ever moved? Okay, thanks. Uh, how many of you have moved? How many of you enjoy the process of moving? You're lying, like, it, it, was, it was absolutely terrible, I did not like it. Love where I was moving to, hated the process of moving, and I'll tell you why. Uh, before I just started moving, I recently got married about seven months ago, and so myself and Sarah, we brought all of our stuff into the same house. The problem is, is before I signed legal documents to get married, I did not realize how much stuff Sarah had. This isn't a shout at, at Sarah, but uh, she, that, that was pre-marriage Sarah. And she has, let's just say, a little bit of stuff. And so over the course of the last few days and weeks, I, we have been packing every single uh, baby clothes and all of the different things. Not, that wasn't an announcement, it's her baby clothes. And so uh, real quick, we found our way into Cherokee County, but it was a mess getting to that point. Uh, I'll let you guys know in all, another little fire that we're going through. Uh, our dog, his name is Winston, uh, new girl, Winnie the Bish, awesome. Uh, Bishop, not the bad word. Uh, but Winnie is, is our dog, this is a, a golden doodle. And golden doodles are adorable, but here's the thing about golden doodles is uh, he's a little bit more golden than doodle. Like, and if you don't know dog breeds, he's a little bit more like, hi, I'm Winston. Like that's his personality in a nutshell. And so Winston, he does not like change. He's like a lot of you, he doesn't enjoy change. And so we, we've brought him over to the new house. He's currently locked in our bedroom because we don't want him to get into anything. That's not like a bad thing, like he needs to be in there. But here's something very specific about Winston. He hasn't, uh, <laughs> he hasn't done what you call number two in like a couple days. 
And what I mean by that in like three days. And so here's the thing. I'm terrified to go home because of what might be waiting for me whenever I'm there. It's like, here's a welcome present. Like I, I, I am very terrified. And so between all of the moving and all of the packing and all of the stress and the last several days and between my dog who has very irregular bowels right now, like I have found myself in a place where our lives have been completely turned upside down and it's gotten to be a little bit messy. Don't get me wrong, y'all are worth it. I am so glad to be living in Cherokee County uh, as I drove like six minutes to get here. It is amazing, I love it. But I'd be lying if I said that it wasn't a little bit messy. I'd be lying if I said that any time that I've ever had my life flip upside down, even for the better, things get to be a little bit messy. I remember changing schools and any time that my life would flip upside down, life just tends to get a little messy. The holiday seasons, maybe for you, you have to go visit that side of your family that you don't love going to see and things get a little bit messy. Maybe you moved, maybe, I don't don't know what that is for you, but isn't it true that whenever our lives get flipped upside down, when life gets flipped upside down, things get messy? I don't care who you are. Anytime, it could be for the best. Anytime that life gets flipped upside down, things get messy. And as we're embarking on the Christmas season, and as we're thinking about, hey, what is it that we're gonna talk about this Sunday at Inside Out? Uh, I actually was like, well, we, we have the Christmas story. Like, I mean, that makes a lot of sense to talk about during the Christmas season. And the more that I began to think about it, and the more that our team began to think about it, we realized that, A messy life actually is the Christmas story. Life getting flipped upside down is the Christmas story. And so we're not gonna start on the very first Christmas, but a little bit before that. And so my hope for you in tonight is that maybe you would see the story of Jesus, but really the birth of Jesus, maybe in an entirely new way. And maybe uh, there's a character in the story that you might not have been able to relate to before that today you could, and that it could change everything about not just how you live today, but the rest of your days. And so today we're gonna be looking at the very beginning of the Christmas story and we find ourselves in Luke chapter one. And so to kind of set the scene for Luke chapter one, we have this girl by the name of Mary, is the, maybe you've heard about the Virgin Mary and is like, this is the mother of Jesus who is in this town and like this angel appears to him, but maybe you've never really dissected how weird the story is. It's strange. In fact, we're gonna start right here in Luke chapter one, verse 28. The angel, his name is Gabriel. If your name is Gabriel, I'm sure you're also an angel. What's up? Uh, Gabriel went to her being Mary and said, greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Now, if an angel appeared to you, one, that's weird. And two, it's like they say, you are highly favored. I don't know why angels talk like that, but they do. And it's like, that would be crazy. But I mean, being highly favored feels like it's a good thing, right? Like, I mean, you don't want an angel to appear to you and say, smite thee. Like you want an angel, if they're gonna appear to you, to say, you are highly favored. You're, you're on the right track. Hey, something great is coming. And so then Gabriel continues Well, first we see that Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. She is scared on the inside. But the angel said to her, do not be afraid, Mary, you have found favor with God. So the first two things that come out of the mouth of Gabriel are you are highly favored. It's like, no, 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 no. You you don't have to worry about what comes next. You have found favor with God. Now, as crazy as an experience it would be to have an angel just appear out of nowhere, I don't know if that happens to you often, it doesn't to me. And so to have that happen in this crazy experience, like something terrible must be happening, but the angel uh, assures and reassures Mary, hey, no, that's not the case at all. In fact, you're highly favored. In fact, you have found favor with God, and if I was married, I'd be sitting there going, okay, what did I do to deserve? Like, I must have been really good this year. Like, I don't know what what happened in order for me to get to this place. And so the angel said that you have found so much favor with God that this is what's about to happen, that you will conceive and give birth to a son and you are to call him Jesus. Now, you might be very familiar with the Christmas story. 
You might have heard it many times. Maybe you read it as a kid, or maybe that this is something like, hey, you say you're a follower of Jesus, so you've actually read it yourself many times. Maybe this is the first time. And if this is your first time hearing this story, you might be more on the same page with me as I am reading through this. Like reading this, you will conceive and give birth to a son and you were to call him Jesus. That's crazy. And here's why. Mary gets the nickname Virgin Mary for a reason, right? Like Mary is betrothed. She, she has a fiance. His name is Joseph. My middle name's Joseph. That is not a coincidence, but I like to flex it. And so Mary, Mary has this moment where she hears this. See, they think it's crazy. I don't know, no, no what that is, but Mary hears this and immediately what would be going through her mind has to be the most insane, the most what is about to happen, the most troubling thing. You said I was highly favored, but the words that just came out of your mouth are crazy. And the angel, before she can even get a word out, just continues to talk, says this, he will be great and will be called the son of the most high. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father, David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever, and his kingdom will never end. Now, something that you need to know about Mary is that she comes from the line of Israel. She is one of God's people. She, she, she is Jewish, and she has been told and read ever since she was a little girl that God's people had been promised a very long time ago that one of David's descendants eventually down the line, like maybe not his son, maybe not his son, but down the line eventually would come somebody that was gonna make all right with the world. Eventually somebody was gonna come and was gonna be a king. And in the meantime, since that promise, God's people had been overtaken by a few different people and they, they were no longer in charge. In the people group, they had kind of disbanded. And so things were, were, were weird and were awkward. They were like, God, are you, are you gonna fulfill your promise? And the moment that Mary heard this, what she probably knew from all the things that she had learned growing up was like, hey, that sounds a lot like the promise that God had made to David. Actually, that sounds exactly like the promise that God made to David. But I don't wanna just jump past what had been said right before. I mean, let's say that you were given this amazing news, but right before the amazing news, a bomb had been dropped on you that was insane. You, he, she might not even have heard the words that came out of Gabriel's mouth next. Because an angel just appeared and said that you're gonna give birth to a son. And you're not even married yet. What do you think was going through her mind? What would you think if you were Mary? I had this friend whenever I was in high school uh, and her name was uh, Lauren and she had this fear that she was going to be the next Virgin Mary. I didn't know that was a thing and she was like, oh no, apparently that's common. I don't know if that is a fear, but she's like, I'm just afraid that one day I'm gonna like wake up and like an angel's gonna be there and your life is conflict completely upside down. If I was Mary in this moment, I would think, man, everything is crazy. Everything in my life is completely flipped upside down. This is not how my 30 year plan was gonna go. This is not what I had in mind. Everything has been turned on its head and I don't know what to do. And put yourself in those shoes. As crazy as that is to imagine, I know that, that some of us is like, I mean, it's hard not to laugh at, right? because it's insane. If I was her, I would be thinking in my mind, oh, what a mess, what a mess. My whole life is a mess. Like I gotta go have the most weird conversation in the world with my fiance, Joseph. And then like, let's say that he begins to believe me. I gotta then go to have a conversation with everybody else. And they're like, hey, you're pregnant, what happened? And you gotta just say, God did it. What would you say if your best friend came up to you at school and said that? I learned this word in the last two months, cap. Like that doesn't make sense. And so here's the thing, if I were Mary, I would be mad. I would be scared. I would be upset. I'd be extremely confused. And personally, I wouldn't understand the words that had just come out all about how, no, Jesus is gonna be this person that's gonna change the world. 
But what Mary says next actually makes her potentially one of the most relatable people that you and I could ever have in the story. She says this, I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word to me be fulfilled. And then the angel left her. That's almost as crazy as what the angel said. Like this, this makes no sense, but Mary sits there and says, you know what? Yes. Yeah, that sounds great. Yeah, angel, yeah, God, I'm gonna listen to you and I'm, I'm gonna choose to trust in you. And then and the next one's a little bit cheesy, but Mary said yes to the mess. Mary said yes to everything that would be unfolding. Now, if I were you, we already said put yourself in Mary's shoes, but I'm gonna put myself in your shoes just for a second. If I were you, I would be sitting there and I'd go, okay, what on earth does Mary have to do with me? Like you said that she's like super relatable, but Chad, I don't know if you know this, but I've never been through this scenario before and neither have I. But what Mary does do is she has been put in a situation that as a matter of fact, many of us are put in all the time. And for a lot of you, you're being put in that situation tonight. And uh, we, we have this phrase that we had earlier that when life gets flipped upside down, things get messy. Here's the thing, I don't know anything in life that flips our lives upside down more than saying yes to Jesus. And that essentially is what Mary's doing in this moment, right? I don't know if you knew this, but Mary was the first ever person that actually put her trust in Jesus in the person that is Jesus. Everybody else for all of human history before her had put their trust in a promise that somebody was coming. But a messenger on behalf of God appeared to Mary and said, hey, trust me, he's worth it. And I was thinking about what happens here at Inside Out. I was thinking about what happens every single Sunday night whenever somebody like me or I get up on a stage and, and we tell you about this person named Jesus on behalf of God, we're kind of like these messengers on behalf of God that tell you about a guy named Jesus that for most of you, and I would say probably all of you, you've never physically seen him. You've never physically heard his voice. And that's the same thing with Mary. In that moment, the angel asked, hey, Mary, would you put your trust and your hope and your entire life, would you flip your life upside down on account of this baby that you've never seen, you've never heard from? And for every single one of us in the room tonight, that's what happens a lot of the times at Inside Out, right? We have y'all, we tell you about this amazing guy named Jesus and it's like, hey, put your trust in him. You've never seen him or heard him, but also it's gonna change your entire life. Have you been promised that before? But then you make a decision at a camp. Maybe you made a decision at Iowa Weekend. Or maybe you made a re-decision at camp. And you're like, man, I want to follow Jesus. And, uh, and it, they talk about how following Jesus is kind of like getting hit by a truck. It changes things. Like nobody gets hit by a truck and then it not change your entire life, right? It's a dark example. Nobody encounters Jesus and says yes to him and it doesn't change something about your life, or at least it should. And some of you, you'd say that you're not a Jesus follower in the room and you're just kind of checking this out and you're considering it maybe for the first time and I'm so glad you're here. But maybe one of the things that bothers you most about people who say that they follow Jesus are the ones that say, hey, I'm gonna say yes to him, but then in every area of their life, they've said no. Does that bother anybody? For some of us, we have the word, it's like, man, they're being a hypocrite in that moment, saying that they think one thing, but then they end up doing another. And so I, whenever I was prepping for this talk, I was challenging myself like, hey, did saying yes to Jesus actually flip my life upside down? Because if I actually said yes, it should, right? It should change everything. 
but it might be the scariest thing in the world to actually do. If you've ever really thought about it, it could be the scariest thing in the world to actually implement into your day to day. Because when life gets flipped upside down by Jesus, friendships get messy. Some of you, whenever you started following Jesus, you had to leave your friend group because you knew that the things that they were saying and the words that they were heaping onto you and the expectations that they had for you, it was weighing you down and you needed to cut yourself off and you needed to find new community only. You didn't have that community waiting for you on the other end and you just felt alone and things got messy. Because whenever your life gets flipped upside down, friendships get messy. Whenever life gets flipped upside down, dating gets messy. All of a sudden you have a whole new hierarchy of what matters to you whenever it comes to dating of who you will and you, you will not date. I remember in high school, every time that we would hear an inside out message on dating, uh, immediately over the course of the next two weeks, there would just be like, did you hear they broke up? That's wild. And then to get back together again because they got over it. But uh, th- th- this... What I mean by that is dating gets messy because there are decisions that you might need to make. And there's some of you in the room tonight that you need to not, maybe for a season. When life gets flipped upside down, family gets messy because you have to have that conversation with your mom or your stepdad that you've been putting off, but it's just about time that you have that conversation. When life gets flipped upside down, money gets messy because you begin to spend it in an entirely new way. And maybe for the first time in your life, you spend it not on yourself, but you're thinking about somebody else maybe in need. This holiday season is an amazing time for that, that whenever life gets flipped upside down by Jesus, time and money get messy. But your time, maybe you spend it investing it in places that are different than before. You spend your Sunday serving You spend your weekdays serving. You spend your time pouring back into your friends and your family that have meant so much to you. Maybe it means that you end up going on a mission trip or on a Global X journey to go invest in the lives of somebody else. That takes a lot of time and it takes a lot of money. It takes a lot of effort and fundraising and getting people on board with sending you to go make an impact in the world. And this could maybe be one of the most anxious parts is that whenever life gets flipped upside down, By Jesus, the future gets messy. Maybe your entire future is completely changed. And I'd be willing to say that for those of you who have actually said, yes, it does change. Your future job may change. Your major may change. Everything about the next 50, 75 years of your life will change. And it can be one of the scariest parts to actually stepping out to Jesus is next best for you. But this is true, and I believe this to be true, and I think your leaders believe this to be true, and I hope that you believe this to be true, is that where there is growth, there are growing pains. But that doesn't mean that it isn't worth it, right? The world that we live in likes to tell you that any time that you face any sort of adversity or any sort of pain or any sort of discomfort, that it's automatically bad, but maybe some of the growing pains of taking those first initial steps with Jesus is really, really messy. But it's not just normal pain, it's growing pains. And think about Mary for a second. The growing pains that she experienced right in the moment that she said, yes, like angel, like God, whatever, whatever you want, let your word be fulfilled in me. The growing pains she experienced next are awkward, are scandalous, are shame and rejection and being an outcast. It's some of the worst emotions that you could ever feel. But here's the thing, Mary had no idea where the trust that she was putting in Jesus would take her. And you never know where your trust will take you. You never know where that next step of a yes is gonna take you. You never know five, 10, 15, 20 years or days down the road where that yes is going to take you. And here's the thing, I think that Mary's next few weeks and months were probably terrible. I don't wanna sugarcoat it. 
it was probably as bad as it sounds if you were put in that situation. But I'd be willing to bet that looking back on her life, because many of us in the room know how the story ends, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna fast forward to uh, April and Easter, if that's okay, is the story ends with her son. He ends up growing up, and he ends up living a perfect life. And he actually does all of the things that the angel said that he would do. And then he died on Good Friday and then rose again on Easter Sunday. And I, I would love for you to have a million conversations with your small group leaders about like, hey, we just kind of skated by that. What is that? But in the moment that Mary was looking at her son alive again, everything that had been promised, I guarantee you the last thing in her mind was thinking about those early days and thinking, oh, what a mess that was. But I'd be willing to bet she thought, oh, what a miracle. What a miracle that whenever I was just way even too young and I was engaged and, and my life, I had no idea it was coming that I said yes way before I knew where that trust was gonna take me. Thank God that I said yes and that I took those next steps. Thank God that even whenever the growing pains were tough and they were hard and that I, I didn't know what was coming next, I continued to put my trust in God. And I guarantee you that for you, that'll be true for you too. My entire friend group fell apart whenever I was a sophomore in high school. Not oh, what a mess, but oh, what a miracle because of the community that God had waiting for you on the other side. I had the hard conversation that I needed to have with my family, oh, what a miracle, because of how Jesus continued to show up in that. I no longer spent my time and my money and my energy and my future on myself, oh, what a miracle. Because if I hadn't said yes in those moments and giving him everything, I wouldn't have experienced all that God had for me in life. And real quick as we close, what I don't want you to do is to walk away from this and not address all the other messes in your life, right? Because there aren't just the messes that come with saying yes to Jesus. The growing pains and the tension that's created whenever you begin to live differently. But there's also the messes that you didn't cause. Maybe it's your family going through a hard time, whether that be sickness or maybe it's broken and it, it, you've gone through those transitions and you feel like you keep on being reminded every other week that it's broken and the holidays are weird because you have to spend it in a couple different places and that's an entirely different kind of mess. Maybe for you, there are things that have happened to you that you did not control or maybe there are things that have happened that you did have control over and if you could go back, you would change everything of the way you handle the situation. But I wanna let you know that God is in that too. That God actually came to flip your life upside down and not, not to fix everything, not to make your situations always 100% easy. In fact, he promises that it's not necessarily always gonna be easy. But I'm gonna be with you in it. And I'm gonna bring people alongside you to be with you in it. The team asked me uh, a couple months ago what my hopes and my dreams for Inside Out are. And my hope is that over the next several months and years, y'all are gonna continue to learn and know that. But the reason why we do everything that we do is because we want you to know that that yes is worth it. And that when you do, that there are people alongside you to encourage you and to challenge you and to grow with you in that yes, especially in the mess. The reason why you do small group is that whenever your friendships get messy, you are not alone. The reason why we have Inside Out is that we have a place to be able to, to gather together and whether that's worship or, or, or the talks or, or the time that we spend rallying together that we can actually go make a difference in our community, but you can know at least one night of the week, and I'd argue every night of the week that you are not alone. 
The reason why we go on Global X trips, why we do service projects, why we have opportunities to volunteer in transit and Wombland and Upstreet is because we believe that there is more to your life than just get, get, get. But that the most fulfilled life can come with giving and serving and pouring out to others. And I know that we've talked about a lot. And I know that we've talked about the messes and we've talked about yes, we've talked about Jesus, we've talked about, about Mary, we've talked about a lot, but if I could boil it down to just one question to leave you with as we head off to small groups, is this one right here. Where do you need to say yes to the mess? Where do you need to say yes in a situation that you haven't been because it's scary? Where do you need to say yes? And again, this is a challenge for everybody in the room. Everybody in the room, small group leaders included, myself included. Where do you need to say yes that it's been scary because you don't know what is waiting for you on the other end? And remember, you never know where trust could take you. So y'all link up, I'm gonna pray for us, and then we're gonna go to small group and we're gonna talk about that very thing. So y'all, y'all shoulder up. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you so much for the day. Thank you for a place at Inside Out that we can continue to gather week in and week out and we can continue to further ourselves and um, our relationship with you, our relationship with one another, and for the people in the room that they feel like they don't have either of those things, a relationship with you, or a relationship with the people around them, God, would they feel known and feel seen tonight? God, that doesn't mean that they have all the answers. That doesn't mean that they have all of the, the, the things and the theology and all the, all the things worked out. God, it doesn't mean any of that, but would they just feel your presence? Would they feel seen by somebody in their small group? God, would you give them the courage to ask the questions that need to be asked? And God, would you give them the courage to say yes where they need to most? So God, we love you and we thank you. It's in your name we pray these things, amen. Amen, amen. Global X signups in eight days. Cozy Christmas next week. We love y'all and we'll see y'all later.